Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings interesting people with perspectives and attitudes that we're going to get to know during the show. Our guest today is Raul Perales, candidate for San Jose City Council, District 3, yes. police officer, and a man with a lot of interesting background. We're going to talk about that now, but before we talk about uh, life as a San Jose police officer, or more importantly, as a candidate for city council, where are you from, where'd you grow up, family life, that kind of thing. Well, thank you, Steve. Thank you for, for having me today on the show. Uh, it's, it's an honor to, to be here, to be invited on, and I'm excited about uh, engaging in the conversation with you. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm born and raised here in, in San Jose. I uh, grew up in West San Jose. Uh, and, and going back a little further uh, to my parents, my father immigrated here uh, from Mexico when he was 13. Oh. And uh, he grew up in Alviso. He grew up rather oh. poor uh, in a trailer park in Alviso. Uh, moved up to somebody's garage uh, after that. Uh, and uh, my mother is, uh, my mother was born actually in Redwood City and raised in Redwood oh. City. She's mixed European, mainly Irish. Uh -huh. uh, and and uh, so I've come from, a, from an immigrant family, a little bit further back on my mom's side, but from my dad's most, most definitely. And uh, my parents met in high school. They met rather young, uh, got pregnant with my sister, uh, and then got pregnant with me uh, a year and a half later. Uh, and they had both of us before they were 19. Wow. And uh, they, they had to drop out of high school, uh, begin working and, and, and raising a family. And, uh, you know, and, and grew up in, in that environment in a very hardworking, uh, you know, humble family, uh, immigrant family and uh, was, was fortunate to have, to have that upbringing that I did from, from my parents. So where did you end up going to school, at San Jose schools? So I was actually, uh, where I grew up in West San Jose off of 280 Saratoga area, uh -huh. I was districted into what would have been Blackford High School, uh, oh. but Blackford closed down by the time I was in high school. Oh. So this was one of the very first fortunate events that happened, uh, unbeknownst to, to me, uh, was I, I got to go to Cupertino High School. Mm. So still living in San Jose, uh, the next closest high school was, was Cupertino. Oh, okay. So I was, and, and Cupertino is, is well known as one of the, the, the best public schools uh, in, yeah. our, in our state, certainly in our, in our, in our valley here. Uh, and so I was fortunate to, to be in a public school, but in, to be in a public school that was, that was you know, one of the best. Well, you're a relatively young man, uh, but you've had a wealth of experiences. Were there any role models that you had in school or growing up that made you think you're going to have a life of public service? You know, for a life of public service, um, no, I wouldn't say, uh -huh. I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, definitely a life of, of you know, uh, working with people, working with humanity, uh, a life of giving back. Uh, and I got that from my parents. Mm. So both, both, as I said, my parents, um, very humble. My father grew up extremely poor in Mexico. Uh, and so everything that, that he earned here, uh, he worked very hard for. Uh, and he focused on giving back to my sister and I, uh, you know, to be able to have a, a better life than what, than what he had. And uh, my mother was, was one of those, those women that she opened up our home to, to anybody. Uh, we actually, I can't recall uh, going uh, longer than a year without having somebody else live in our house. Oh. A, a family friend, uh, a, a cousin, an aunt, uh, you know, one of, one of my sister's friends through high school, one of my friends through high school. Uh, we were just, you know, my parents were that, were that type of, of people. Kind and of a hub. Yes, a, a hub, uh, very open, uh, you know, and, and, and very giving, giving back to, to not only to the family, but to extended family and then to the, to the community. Very cool. So, uh, college? So, yeah, so I was actually, my sister uh, was the first to go to college, uh, but she ended up uh, having her first child as well. Uh, and so she, she pulled out uh, and, and ended up uh, raising her, her, her daughter. She's now on, she's pregnant with her fourth kid. Oh, wow. Uh, and so she's been, she's been a real champion and actually a, uh, an inspiration in my life as well. Uh, so I was the, the second to be able to attend college, but the first to be able to graduate. Oh, okay. And I went to San Jose State uh, and, and was very excited to be able to, to go to state, uh, to stay local, uh, to be in the downtown area, uh, and, and graduated with a degree in mathematics. Uh, and my, the emphasis was on teaching. So my, oh. my initial interest was to, to be a teacher oh. in the Valley. And so after school, you, after college, you got into some community service work like, well, I mean, I'm calling teaching community service. Mm -hmm. It is serving the community. Yeah, I did. I, I, so immediately after finishing uh, college, I, I became a substitute teacher. 
and I went right back to my old high school, Cupertino High School, Fremont Union High School District, and I subbed for some of my old teachers. I was oh. four years removed from high school, uh, so you can imagine it was it was an interesting uh, <laughs> dynamic. I had students that I was teaching that were seniors; they were 18, uh, and I was 22 and a half. <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and it was it was fun though to be able to be in front of the classroom and show them that hey, in four short years, you can go from from you know pupil from from student. To, to being in charge of the classroom, to you know, and that's what college can allow you to do. Yeah. And so, uh, but I did realize though at Cupertino that the challenges weren't really what I was looking for. Growing up in a in, a, in an immigrant household, speaking Spanish, uh, growing up in, in the, the San Jose area, the more difficult area, uh, I, I felt I could I could make a bigger impact somewhere else. So I actually went over to East Side. Uh, so I started subbing in East Side Union, subbed with uh, Moxa. They had two charter schools at the time. Yeah. Uh, got involved with them, and and so I've, I've remained a sub actually through the years, and now for the last two years I've been a sub in what's called alternative ed with the county, which wow. is uh, juvenile hall, community day schools, and the boys ranch, and uh, and currently as as I've been serving as a police officer for the last eight years, I'm the only active duty officer in our county that's also a sub in juvenile hall. She whiz. So what made you want to go into law enforcement? So as I started subbing right out of uh, right out of college. I, I was interested in doing something else along with it. So I went back to school six months after I graduated. I went to Mission College, became an EMT. So it's a six month program. <laughs> uh, well, I did it in, I did it in the, one, the one semester. Uh -huh. uh, became an EMT, f finished up, became uh, nationally certified, and then became certified so as a county. So emergency medical technician. Uh, yes, emer emergency medical te te technician, yeah. And, uh, and so I, I, I was hired with the HP Pavilion at the time, which is now SAP Center working Sharks games, concerts. It was, it was weekend work. It was, uh, you know, I, I got to do some of the, like the Fiestas Patrias that they have in the downtown area. Um, you know, I got to do some of the on-site EMT work. I never worked in a rig, but I worked on-site. Uh -huh. And it was through that work, while I was actually working at Moxa, that my, my boss, uh, one, of my, one of my mentors as well, who's been a park ranger here in San Jose for a long time, she was the, the lead EMT at, uh, at HP Pavilion, and she had said, you know, what about applying for the police department? Have you ever thought of it? And I said, you know, no, I'd, I'd, never, I'd never once thought of, of being an officer. That wasn't something that had crossed my path. Uh, but I looked into it. I met a lot of officers that were working down at the Sharks games as well. And I ended up applying while I was with Moxa and went through the process. Uh, nine months later, was offered the position with the police department. So I had the decision to make, do I want to stick with, with the schools at this point mm -hmm. um, and, and continue on, go back and get my full-time credential or do I want to, I now have an offer, uh, you know, as, as an officer, do I want to do this? And so I didn't want to turn that offer down and, and, and not at least give it a shot. Mm -hmm. uh, I had actually never been in a police car, the front or the back, <laughs> uh, in my entire life. So um, before I started the academy. And so I, I, I took the position um, and I've been with the police department, you know, now for going on eight years. It'll be this December. Wow. Um, so what about being a police officer has informed you to want to become a member of the city council. So I, I you know, as I said with, with my family, um, you know, my, my family was also not very politically active. Mm -hmm. My father just became a citizen this year. So he was here for 35 years, you know, as a, as a legal permanent resident and never inclined to, to want to vote or to get more engaged. And so he was, you know, he's been working with the same company, uh, Pepsi Cola for, you know, for the, since, he, since he got my, my mother pregnant with my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very hard worker, taking care of the family, uh, you know, put the, the food on the table and the roof over our head. Uh, but beyond that, uh, he, he didn't, he wasn't inclined to get involved in, in politics. Uh, my mother would would vote occasionally, um, and you know, and same thing though. I, I didn't get that that political engagement from from them. Uh, I ended up I ended up becoming more active because of social the social issues that were going on with immigration. Uh, I was there for the 2006 uh, the first May Day march. Oh. Um, you know, with you know, walking out with with students of mine. Actually, when I was at Mox, I was I was walking. That was right before I was a police officer. And so my my engagement with politics, I, I've been engaged, but mainly socially. But through working with the city now, being a city employee, uh, as you may be well aware, we, we've experienced some, some difficult times over the last few years. Um, about four years ago now, I received a pink slip when we laid off officers for the first time uh, in San Jose's history. I was fortunate not to get laid off, uh, but that was really the initial spark that, that got me more interested in wanting to know, well, what, what does go on with, with the local politics? What, you know, the, the fingers were being pointed left and right, and I wanted to just find out how I could be more involved, uh, and and since then is, is when I've really developed my my involvement in in the local uh, the local politics, 
uh, in the local elected leadership here uh, in San Jose. So, but while you were doing all that, you were also active, you became a member of the Human Relations Commission, uh, you were involved in other programs like the Project Cornerstone. Uh, tell us a little bit about what made you want to get into those uh, endeavors. So, you know, similarly to as, to, as I said, uh, my, my two, you know, my role models, my parents and, and their involvement with the, with the community and, and, and reaching out and helping others. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't, I'm single, I don't have any children, and so I, it allowed me that extra time to be able to, to do what I enjoy, which is giving back. So I got involved with a number of different programs, um, both inside the police department and outside mm. of the police department. So for uh, almost five years now, I've been a big brother with the Big Brothers oh, Big Sisters program. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, and, and I, I started volunteering as well almost five years ago now with a program called Stand Up For Kids. And we help uh, homeless youth, we help advocate with homeless youth in the area. Uh, while I was in the police academy, I actually became a, uh, a CASA, which is a court-appointed uh, special advocate. So you end up as a, a court-appointed advocate for youth in the, the uh, justice system mm. um, and the child welfare system. And, and you know, so through a number of different involvements, one, uh, one of them was, was through uh, Silicon Valley Faces. And so they, they run a program called Camp Every Town. Uh, and, and so as the police department, we used to team up with them uh, when we had a community services division that would that would focus on this community involvement and so through them I, I volunteered and partnered up and I would go do camp every town I would do it for a whole week I'd go out in a camp and you'd be I'd be basically undercover I'd be there as a as a, a mentor a counselor staying with the youth and then on the last day of camp I come out in uniform uh, oh, wow. you know and, and the kids get to get to realize that they've been you know staying with and you know engaging with uh, a police officer and they it, it, covers the stereotypes of, of how generally they may feel about police officers and it's a great camp, great program uh, and, and that's where uh, I got involved with the, the Project Cornerstone actually uh, recognized and, and awarded me as the Adult Role Model of the Year 2013 because of my work in the community with programs like Big Brothers, programs like Silicon Valley Faces and Camp Every Town. Well I know Project Cornerstone is a great uh, model where you know parents and others go into the classroom uh, they talk about developmental assets and try to bring this out in every kid. Yeah, yeah. The, the 41 developmental assets that they that they you know that they cover, um, you know, these are things that when I was growing up we didn't we didn't have on paper we didn't look at. Yeah. But looking back at them because of the you know the, obviously the support that I had in my family the support that I had in my community, those are assets that I that I had that all allowed me to be able to to go to college to to, to finish college to get to a place where I'm at today where I can advocate for the community. So in, in doing programs like Big Brothers Big Sisters, like Camp Every Town, like working with Faces, uh, and being able to provide those those assets that that not everybody has uh, has been has been rewarding. Well, great. We're going to take a little break now. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk about all this and how that has informed you to uh, want to become a leader in the city on the city council. So we'll Thank be you. right back. Hi, my name is Evan Lowe, member of the Campbell City Council and I encourage you to get involved in your community. Make sure that you are registered to vote and that when you are registered to vote that you in fact exercise that right to vote. It's so important for not only the younger generations to get involved but it's important that all of us participate in the public process. So do your part. Register to vote, get others to vote, and make sure that you go out to the polls. And don't forget to volunteer for the Democratic Party. Welcome back to Democratic Television. We're speaking with Raul Perales, a candidate for city council, a police officer, a community service expert. You've done a lot of things in your um, uh, tenure as a uh, San Jose resident. Uh, we were talking about uh, some of you know community service, uh, community human relations stuff. Um, what made you want to kind of take that step? So as, as I got involved, as I was saying before, in, in regards to, uh, you know, just getting more involved in, in the local politics, uh, I, I started off getting involved with, with even my union, uh, walking on campaigns, uh, understanding more about the actual local politics. And as I did, I, I, my first group that I joined was actually the Silicon Valley Young Democrats. Mm. Uh, and through that, that organization was, was able to, to open a lot more doors in regards to what else was available to get involved in the community. I actually at that point didn't know that commissions and committees existed, mm. um, you know, and so I, when, I, when I realized that they did, it was, uh, it was one of the things that I wanted to get involved with. So I, 
I applied and got appointed as a human relations commissioner mm. at the county level. County, okay. Yes, uh, and to my to my knowledge, it was one, was one of uh, three officers in history to serve on that on that commission. I, I made it to the role of the vice chair of the commission and termed out earlier this year in April. Mm. Uh, and I was able to also get appointed by Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren as one of her state delegates uh, with the Democratic Party. Wow. Uh, and through that, it was through that involvement uh, on, on learning more of, of a role that, that I could play here locally as an advocate uh, that, that I began to develop the interest uh, in even the idea of, of doing something like this, which is running for, for council. So, I mean, uh, we'll talk about running for council, but I really like the idea of you as a police officer having all these experiences, working with youth, being a teacher, uh, maybe even being an um, emergency medical technician. Uh, I have to assume that that's not a typical course for police officers. Yeah, no, uh, definitely not. You, you know, it, it was certainly um, roles that I played that not many officers uh, had gotten involved with. As I said, uh, for the last two years, I've been a substitute in juvenile hall yeah. with alternative ed, and I'm the only active duty officer that, that has done that, um, you know, and, and that, that is still doing it now. Uh, so certainly, you know, it's, it's an interesting role to play. I have, I have actually substitute taught uh, students that I had arrested a week, oh. a week prior, oh. uh, you know, and, and being in the same classroom, but now being there as, as a, you know, as someone that can engage with them as, a, as a, an instructor, as a teacher. And one of the things that I think that what it allowed me to do and what naturally as well, what, you know, the roles that I and, and the, the values I'd learned from, from my family uh, was treating people with respect. Uh, which is why I was even interested in a role like being a human relations commissioner. Human rights have always been, been you know, a huge goal of mine uh, in engaging with the community, treating people with that respect. Whether I was a volunteer in the community or whether I was an officer in uniform, I, I've been able to maintain a, a, a really good reputation, a, a really good respect with the community in whether I'm taking somebody to jail or whether I'm there working with them uh, you know, in their neighborhoods. Uh, and so that allows me to go into the schools and still engage with these students uh, on a positive, in a positive way, uh, and maybe prevent them from from ever coming back, from ever making making uh, making choices like that again. So, how do you feel all that background in uh, community service and law enforcement has informed you in terms of being a member of the city council? Well, one thing it's it's done is it's it definitely forced me to to be uh, a bridge builder. Uh, between different viewpoints, uh, there are, in fact, a, a roommate of mine right now is 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 very conservative, a uh, registered Republican. Uh, he's been an officer with me for for you know the duration of, of that I've been on, uh, and and at the same time having and building a relationship with him and working with 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 him, to to see you know the the other side of of, of the idea as well. Uh, on issues like, uh, you know, immigration reform or the civil detainer policy, which is something that I advocated for while a human relations commissioner, mm. uh, you know, I, I was, I was, I was walking a thin line, if you will, you know, building a bridge between uh, the the police department and, and the district attorney's office, as well as our community, our immigrant community, uh, and and so I've been able to manage, uh, I think, a really good role and, and understand how to look at both sides of an issue and how to take. Uh, take in everyone's opinion, uh, consider their, their points of view, and then make a decision as well and a standpoint of my own. And I think that, you know, that will definitely um, be a major, a major asset of mine in council. So uh, you're going door to door. Uh, I know you're doing a lot of things, but you're also talking to voters and uh, telling them about your candidacy, who you are. What are people saying to you? What are their issues? So the, the you know the, the issues the priority issues that are coming up at the doors certainly public safety uh, in San Jose we've we've seen a, a rise in crime we've seen a depletion of of our police department uh, and people are concerned because it's it's affecting them it's affecting them with with crime in their neighborhoods uh, and and o and an overall theme as well for for San Jose as a whole and so that's certainly a, a priority issue. Uh, in, in the District 3 area, um, as you may be aware of, uh, of, you know, we have one of the largest homeless encampments in the nation uh, that's been titled The Jungle. Right. Uh, par a portion of that is in District 3, but regardless, it borders our, our neighborhood, our district. Uh, and, and to address not only the, our homeless residents, but to address the growing need for, for housing and affordable housing mm. is, has, been, has been an issue that, that's come up at the doors. Uh, you know, and, and then you get the, 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 the most common ones 
schools. You know, people are, are definitely concerned about how the schools are performing, uh, that their children are safe when they're in schools, uh, and, and you know, those, those overall themes. Well, I understand safety in schools. How, does, how do people make a connection between your council candidacy and the schools? You're obviously not going to be on the school board. Yeah, no, but what they see is, is uh, you know, we play a role as an advocate in the city as a whole, the direction that it goes, um, after school programs, these are mm -hmm. things that have been cut over the years, things that I would love to see be brought back uh, to, you know, it, to, to safety of, you know, crossing guards in the areas or uh, in, in the, the Guadalupe, Washington neighborhood where we have Vine and Almaden where for over a decade the neighborhood has been requesting that, that those one-way streets be converted to slow down the traffic mm -hmm. um, in areas where we've unfortunately had uh, children get hit and, and, and killed because of, because of that. So we play certainly a, a huge role. We're not on the school board, uh, but we definitely play a role in, in, their, in their education of their, their children. And how about things like the neighborhood parks, the libraries and all that, that um, has been a bone of contention that the city wouldn't move forward with recent, recently completed libraries? Yeah, absolutely. It's a shame to have s libraries and to have them closed or to have them have such short hours because this is an access especially for for a community like like I was growing up without access to to a computer or to the internet uh, to be able to in a, in, a, in the time that we are now when when in schools you're expected to just type up your your reports or your essays uh, a lot of our community depends on the libraries to have that access to do so to so have to have those hours cut or to have the, the libraries closed is certainly a concern of theirs as well as as you mentioned with the, with the parks we have parks like St. James Park, a historical gem of the city, but at the moment it's just a, a, a hub of crime. Uh, and, and so being able to focus on restoring areas like that, making them useful for the entire community as, a, as an area for us in our backyard to be able to, to, to take our families and our kids out to uh, is certainly a, a concern of, of, of our residents. Now, one of the other things that I think a council person needs to know is how to read a budget. You know, what's going on with our precious dollars, there's not enough of them, and if people don't understand that, then um, they're missing a very important point in uh, public life. Yeah, absolutely, and I think initially uh, my, my degree and my, my history as being a math major uh, has, has helped me in, in regards to, to being comfortable with looking at spreadsheets, looking at numbers, uh, budgeting in my own in my own life as well. Uh, but I've also done, done homework over the years in regards to understanding the budget, where the money goes and where it comes from, how we can invest it better. Uh, you know, and I think there's been a number of, of ways that we've, we've dealt with our budget over the years, uh, namely meaning we've done a lot of cuts uh, and we haven't really looked at the revenue side of things. We haven't looked at how do we invest better with some of this money that we have to be able to, to look at the other side of it. And so I'm, I'm very eager and interested in getting in and be able to, to use my expertise to, to help with that. Um, you sound pretty well-rounded. So, you know, what happens when you get elected? Um, boards and commissions will no longer be something you can be involved with, the police department. Uh, it's great to have EMT training, uh, but you won't be doing that kind of thing. Yeah, no, I, this was, uh, this was a, a major portion of the decision that I yeah. had to make uh, over the last few years, and especially last year before I, I actually decided to, to put my name in for the race. I, I will be giving up uh, my career as a police officer. Um, we, we can't retire. We don't vest in re retirement until 10 years, and I've only, we'll have, I will only have eight on. So wow. I'll actually be giving up my years on, potentially even losing that, that pension that I've had put in on my own, um, you know, and, and hanging up the hat as a career as a police officer as well as the, the roles of commissioners, uh, you know, and, and that role playing in the community. Uh, but it will, be for, it will be for the benefit and the better because I'll be able to be an advocate not only for within just, the, say, the police department or just on a commission. I'll be able to be an advocate for the entire District 3 and San Jose as a whole. So your uh, mom and dad weren't politically active. Your dad just got uh, citizenship and able to vote. What do they say about their son? Uh, well, they're, they're not only extremely happy uh, and proud, and in fact, my dad became a citizen because I was running, and I told him, I said, if, you know, Pops, if I can't, if I can't convince you to, you know, to, to the importance of voting, then how can I go out and convince, you know, the, the district? Uh, and so he voted for the first time in June. They actually, they live in District 1, so they can't vote for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, they, but he voted, you know, for his first time. And so not only are they proud, though, but they're 
some of my most active uh, participants and volunteers on the campaign. My mom is actually my volunteer coordinator. Oh. Uh, my father is my treasurer. Oh. Uh, so he's been taking care of all my numbers. My dad's been been doing inventory with Pepsi for 30 years. So he's <laughs> I trust. Not only do I trust him, but he's actually he's he's, he's really good with it as well. Uh, and and they've devoted a lot of time and energy. They're very excited uh, and and looking forward to it. We have about two minutes left. Uh, if people want to get hold of your campaign or they want to talk to you directly. Do you have a website and contact info you could share with people? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a, a, a great website. In fact, I have to, to thank my girlfriend for that, Victoria Ramirez. She's done a wonderful job with our social media and our website. Uh, and you can go and visit it at www.raulparalis.com. Uh, and you can also send an email to our, to our email, which will head to my campaign manager, which is voteparalis2014 at raulparalis.com. That sounds like a good way to get hold of you. So what other activities are going to be taking place? You're walking precincts. I'm sure you're going to a lot of campaign activities, potential debates. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, we have debates that come up as well. We, we publicize that on our website so you can find out more information there. Uh, and we will definitely be walking. We've been walking now for eight, nine weeks for the, for the runoff portion of it. Uh, it's getting really exciting. Uh, you know, we have a number of volunteers. We just had uh, the, this past week, we had 15 volunteers come out uh, for phone banking. Uh, we have had 40 plus volunteers on the weekends that come oh. out. And, and this is, this is excited friends, family, coworkers, some people that have never walked, actually most people that have never walked, uh, you know, in campaigns. So certainly a lot of opportunities to get involved. That sounds great. Raul, I wish you well in your campaign and look forward to uh, attending your swearing in ceremonies. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching Democratic Television. Give us a call at 408-445-9500 to learn more about what we're involved in or visit our website www.sccdp.org and we'll see you on the campaign trail. <laughs>